that your hand is on this vessel this morning and that you will speak through me um, saying what you what you want to be said the way that you want it to be said God I thank you Father God that as you have anointed me to teach you have anointed everyone that's a part of this assembly this morning to hear and to hear what thus said the Lord and we shall not just be hearers of the word but we will be doers of the word God yes. so we'll take whatever it is that you give Father God and we'll move out on it I thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus Lord God and give you the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name Jesus amen. 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 amen amen and amen, amen. so our um, message this morning is simply called wait how did I get here and so I have to first ask, haven't you ever had those times where it seems like you just kind of uh, almost woke up, you know, almost from a sleep and you had to say, well, wait, wait a minute, how did I get here? Where am I? What am I doing? What happened? I've gotten off track. How did I get off track? Exactly what's going on? Um, that awakening is one that I wanna share this morning is one of realizing that you're out of position, right? And being in position and being properly aligned is so important in every area of our life, whether it's with our relationships, whether it is in our careers, right? In order to um, kind of what they say, climb the proverbial career ladder, you got to be properly aligned. You got to be in the right position, the right place at the right time. When you're not in position, it doesn't feel good. It leaves you wondering and you realize that you're not producing. Sometimes it just feels like you're stuck. You feel like you're hitting the same wall over and over again. All of those can be symptoms for being not in the right position. And so the right positioning this morning that I'm gonna talk about involves being who God called you to be and then doing what it is God called you to do. I'm talking about being perfectly aligned with the will of God for your life. And there are so many reasons as I shared earlier that we can find ourselves out of alignment or outside of the will of God. And we find a lot of reasons in the word of God. And I'm gonna share some, and then I'm gonna go ahead and read from the book of Jonah. Sometimes we don't know our position. In other words, we don't know who we are quite yet. A great example of this comes from 1 Samuel 3, and God was calling Samuel, and um, Samuel could hear the voice but he didn't recognize it as the voice of God. So he began even reaching out and calling his elder and saying, hey, going into his room and say, hey, did you call me? I could have sworn I heard something. Was that you? And his elder kept saying, and this was Eli, the priest. No, it wasn't me that called you. So it's so important that we know who we are. And we've been studying this um, in Bible study in Colossians, understanding that as believers, we are redeemed now, and because we are redeemed, we are back into, guess what, position. Huh? There's that word again. We're back into alignment with the Father. There is no longer any division, right? There's no longer any division. So it's important that we know who we are and that when the Father speaks, we then know his voice so that we can hear him and do what? and then obey. Now, another example is sometimes you were in position, but you just kind of slipped out of position. And that's the one that really makes you say, wait a minute, how do I get here? And when I think about that, I couldn't help but think about Adam. You know, I had to go all the way back to the beginning in the, in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve were walking together with the Lord, no separation, no division. The word and commentary shares, you know, they, they were seeing in the realm of the spirit, just like they could see in the natural, Adam and Eve. But all of a sudden, things change. They found themselves out of position. One day they are in the garden. The next day they're being kicked out of the garden and they are being put to work at a whole nother level. 
So I can hear, I can hear, even as I'm talking about this now, I can hear Adam and Eve saying, wait a minute, how in the world did I get here? Sometimes being out of position is the result of getting off track or not hear, hearing God clearly and not moving when he says to move. If you are not positioned in the right place at the right time and the father's trying to get something to you, he's not going to be able to reach it, right? I, I um, This week, even in my quiet time, I clearly sense the Lord saying, you know, he wanted me to go and move and start working some from out of my office down at the ark. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, with the whole onset of COVID, I went from working full-time downtown Atlanta for almost 30 years, making that drive daily back and forth to doing something that I had been praying about doing for years, being able to work at home. I'm telling you, this was like a dream come true, even in the midst of difficult times. Yet, I really sensed that in my quiet time last week that the Lord was like, I want you down there a um, few days a week, Right? So what did I do? I didn't go into the whole thing about Lord. I had prayed for years for you to let me work from home. Now I'm at home and you tell me to go somewhere else. I started packing my stuff up because I already knew. Part of maturing and growing is that when the Lord speak, speaks, we don't have to um, go kicking and screaming. We can hear his voice and we can get up and move. And so I've spent time over the last week just getting things together down there. This is a point of transition. And so I'm getting into what position. And I think I shared with Prophet Taisha the very minute I got down there, I was just taking my laptop out of my bag and I could feel such an excitement. I, I can't really explain it. And guess what? I don't even have all the rest of the details for what may be going on next. I'm not sure why he told me to go back down there, but I knew I knew it was him. And so if he said it, I got to get on it, right? And we don't always hear the Lord's voice clearly. We don't all get it every single time. We don't. But man, when you get it, you got to move on it. So sometimes we need to be repositioned and it's not comfortable, right? And we didn't got so used to comfortable, even if comfortable hadn't been the best, it had been comfortable. But be ready to move. I think that's where I started this morning. Be ready, be ready, get ready to move when God says to move. Amen. Lastly, sometimes we out of position because it's just plain old disobedience. God said go left and we didn't went right because we just don't want to do what it is that God is telling us to do. Have you ever had those times when you know he told you to do something and doggone it, you just didn't want to do it? That's where I'm going to begin with Jonah this morning, because that's kind of where Jonah was. Now, it's not, Jonah is not a, a, a long book at all, so I'm going to definitely tell you um, to go back and read the whole book. I'm not going to read the whole book to y'all this morning, but I am going to read a few verses. And then if you will allow me, I'm going to summarize a little bit so I can help you with this thing about positioning and getting into position. So I'm going to start with Jonah, the first chapter, and I'm reading verses one through three. That's where I'm going to begin. Jonah one, verses one through three. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because their evil has come up before me. Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. And what I want you to focus on here was the Lord gave Jonah a command to get up, go to Nineveh, and to preach there. And Jonah got up 
and instead went to a place called Tarshish. And the word says that this place was from the Lord's presence. In other words, he went away from the Lord's presence. Now I'm going to jump down right now to verse 17. It says, the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. First verse of chapter two, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. All right, I'm jumping now to verse 10 of chapter two. Then the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Going into chapter three, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. What did the Lord say this time? Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach the message that I tell you. So Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's command. So let me summarize this thing for you. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Jonah was a prophet, a great prophet. And when the Lord, word of the Lord came, guess what? He heard, but he did not obey. It says the direction that Jonah went in, he went away from the presence of the Lord. And when he went away from the presence of the Lord, the word says the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah up. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So in him being disobedient and moving away from the presence of the Lord, he ended up in some big trouble. Amen. He ended up in some big trouble. Um, but he was wise. The next thing he did was <laughs> he prayed. And if you read into chapter two, Jonah prayed a long prayer. But he even started in his prayer just kind of saying, God, this is why I didn't particularly want to go to Nineveh. In other words, he was just kind of telling God where he was, you know, and, and, and giving God his two cents. But eventually he got back around to the point to know that he had to sacrifice what he thought, what he thought was right, what was comfortable for him. And he had to be obedient to do what the word of the Lord said. And it wasn't until God knew that Jonah had really repented and had turned and was getting ready to get back into position that the father commanded the fish to vomit Jonah onto dry land. Now, here's one of the things that I love about this story. If you look at Jonah 1, verse 1, and then you look at Jonah 3, verse 1, it's the same scripture. What the Lord had commanded Jonah to do did not change just because of what Jonah thought, what Jonah felt, how Jonah had delayed it, how much kicking and screaming he was doing, how the fish had ate him up, all this stuff went on in between. But the word of the Lord never changed. Jonah 1 and 1 says, get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because their evil has come up before me. Jonah 3 and 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Get up, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach the message that I tell you. So listen, when the Lord has given you something to do, when he has given you some instructions to follow, when he has, has um, placed a purpose on your life, all that stuff that go on in between, it don't change what the Lord has said. It doesn't change his instruction to you. And he's not going to go on giving you all of this other stuff and showing you all of these other things when you have not moved forth on the first thing the Lord says. So the Lord says this morning to get into position, whether you're not in position because you made a mistake, whether you're not in position because, yeah, you heard the Lord, but what he told you to do, you just didn't want to do it. Whether you were in position and you just kind of got out position, guess what? Get back into position. Hallelujah. And I don't care how many time, how much time has gone on. For Jonah, it was just three days in between. But for some of us, it could have been years. 
It could have been years that you had this thing sitting on the closet, it could, in the closet, on the shelf. It could have been years that you have just been in this place of denial. It could have been years that you have been waiting for the Lord to even change what it is you wanted him to say. But guess what? Wake up. Hear what he's saying. Is he saying like he did to Jonah? He's saying the same thing. And the instruction has not changed. Now, I don't want to just, um, I don't want to badmouth Jonah. Let's be real. Let me talk a little bit about Nineveh. Nineveh was a place, commentary show, that was full of liars, murderers, and thieves. And in fact, Jonah was a little bit physically afraid to go to Nineveh because the word was, they'll kill you in a minute. And you know, back in that day, they weren't necessarily shooting you with guns, What they, the head was coming off, right? So Jonah was a little bit afraid, and sometimes that's us. We are a little bit afraid about the assignment that God has put on our life because there is some risk involved, because there is some danger involved. But surely if the Lord has given you an assignment and he's told you to move out in a particular direction, he is going to protect you. He has made provision for you already in that place. But you have to listen and be obedient and walk with him and be in position so that even as he pours out additional instructions, you are there to hear and to receive. Now, also, Jonah, um, again, you have to give it to him. Jonah loved the Lord. He was a prophet of the Lord. And so these people um, in Nineveh, Nineveh were very rough. They ne weren't necessarily worshipers of the Lord. I mean, they had all kinds of stuff going on. And frankly, Jonah felt like they really didn't even um, deserve another chance, right? And sometimes that's us. Uh, so let me just speak about what I'm hearing this morning. What relationship have you cut off? Who have you cut off because of something that happens in the past? or because somebody, the life they're living is not what you think it should be, and you have just cut off and severed the relationship, is the Lord telling you to go back this morning? Are you supposed to be the one that continues to speak the word of the Lord before them, knowing that one day they will hear? Because guess what? That's what happened at Nineveh. This time, oh my God, <laughs> this time, when Jonah ended up going to Nineveh, guess what? They heard the word of the Lord, rent their clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, repent, and the whole city was saved. My God, the whole city was saved. So, you know, I, I haven't found this in commentary, but it could be that Jonah had been to Nineveh before. He had been trying to tell Nineveh. He had been trying to preach the word of the Lord and prophesy, and they just weren't trying to hear it. But the word of the Lord does start off by the Lord saying, go to the great city at Nineveh. So sometimes we can't see the greatness in a thing or in a person, but the Lord does. And the Lord knew that regardless of how Nineveh was looking and the people in Nineveh were looking, this was a great city. And he knew that at some point they would hear the word of the Lord and they would be obedient to it and repent. And when they did, and when Jonah moved, and when Jonah was obedient, again, the entire city was saved. So what a great loss this could have been if Jonah had just been uh, disobedient and not finally come around to his senses. So a few other things, and I'm almost done. A few other things I want to share. And that is often um, we are afraid. And so we slip out of position. We outside of the will of God. When we're there, we're on our own. When Jonah got into the belly of that well, he was on his own. And the evidence of that was the first person he called to was God. So when we have other people around us and we get into a little trouble and we feel like we got some other outs, oftentimes we have reached out to them. 
But you know when you realize you're on your own because you like, Father, and that was Jonah. He knew in the belly of that well, it wasn't nobody else that could come to his rescue. Understand that we can run, but we can't hide from the presence of God. Jonah tried to go away from the presence of the Lord. And so in this, it doesn't necessarily mean that God couldn't get where he was. It meant that he went outside of God's will and outside of God's direction. But guess what? God found him where he was. Thank God that he will find us where we are, right? So you can run, but you can't hide. And I actually even take that to mean you can't shake this thing that God has put on you. You can't shake this assignment on your life. You can't wish it away, right? It's going to continue to shake and rest with you. God is calling and he desires you to move in his perfect will. Amen. The, uh, the Lord is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. All things everywhere at all times. Amen. Understand, and this is really important, that being out of position will hinder you. But not only will it hinder you, it will hinder those around you and those that are connected to you. So I'm going to go into another piece of the story here, and you're going to find this um, at the latter part of chapter one of Jonah. When Jonah went to go to Tarshish, he had to take a boat. He bought a ticket. He got on this boat. The word of God says he went down into the, um, I guess, the bottom part of the boat. I'm, I forget what they call it. And he went there and he went to sleep. But a storm arose on the sea. And the word tells us that this storm was so violent that the other people on the ship got to a point and said, mm -mm, this is no ordinary storm. What is going on? What has happened? And they began to look amongst each other and say, what have you done? Well, at this point, Jonah was still <laughs> in the belly of the, the ship, even asleep, right? So they ended up waking Jonah up and bringing him up and saying, listen, something is going on. And they ended up doing something called casting lots. And basically, that's kind of like um, what we call pulling straws. So they had several straws, all of different lengths. Everybody pulled one. And whoever got the shortest one, basically, they believed that that was an indication that that person had something to do with whatever's going on. So you need to fess up. So in this process, guess who got the shortest straw? <laughs> it was Jonah. And he was quick to say, y'all right, it's me. It's me. I'm the cause. Listen, just throw me overboard. So here, this mess that Jonah was in was not just affecting him, but it was affecting others around him, which at this moment were these individuals on the ship and the storm was raging so greatly that it threatened their lives. The word also tells us that they threw other things on the ship overboard, all of their supplies and things, just trying to, to lighten the load so that they could ride out the storm. And then too, they knew throwing Jonah overboard was doing what? Sacrificing his life. And they didn't want to do that. But in the end, nothing else would help deal with this issue. So they had to throw Jonah overboard, right? They had to throw him overboard. That's the only thing that saved their life. Now we read, of course, the word says that God caused a big fish to swallow up Jonah. So back to where I started here, listen, your, uh, dis your disobedience is not just about you. Your being in the wrong place at the wrong time in the wrong position, it is not just about you. It can affect your spouses. It can affect your children. Most of you on here are leading ministries and nonprofits and businesses. Let me tell you, leader, get into position. Watch your positioning. Watch your obedience to the Lord. You being out of position can and will affect those that you are leading. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. We got to be in position. Being in position is being in the place where you're going to do 
what you promised God to do. And I need to go in on this a little bit because sometimes we have prayed for years for God to do some things. And it's taken years, either um, sometimes we say it's taken years for him to do it. Most times it's taken years for him to, to, to get us together to be ready to stand up under the weight of the blessing because every blessing has responsibility attached to it and responsibility can be weighty, right? But in that prayer, all of those years we've been asking God for, we made vows to him. And now that the time is coming, come on now, we're trying to step aside. We act like we're in a spiritual slump. Where is that excitement? Hallelujah. Where is that anticipation? Where is that energy? Let me speak it back into you this morning now in the name of Jesus. Let me decree because I understand sometimes when it's been years, it weighs down on you, but I'm lifting that now in the name of Jesus. Be restored excitement. Be restored passion. Let the fire burn again on the inside of your people this morning. Now in the name of Jesus, because this is the time and this is the season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But set your mind, set your eyes, set your attention to it. I hear the Lord say, forget the things that are in the past. Forget how long it's taken. Forget where you messed up and failed and move forward. I have never birthed a physical baby, but I heard somebody tell me that no matter what the labor pains you go through, when you give birth to that child in a moment, you seem to forget all of that. Hallelujah. And that's what I hear the Lord saying now. Know that the moment you give birth here, the moment that you step out and move forward, you're going to forget all that mess that happened in the past. You're going to forget what you had to go through. You got to stop replaying all of that stuff in your mind. You got to stop all the if I could have, would have, should have, right? And move forward. It's the time. Listen. Jesus um, lived and was trained and developed for 30 years for a three-year ministry. How do you know you late? <laughs> this could be the moment. Hallelujah. What I have seen God birth in the midst of this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic that has hit the world is nothing short of amazing. And some people think, you mean now, God? In the midst of everything that's going, yes, now, <laughs> right now, amen. And I'm going to tell you, the world has needs that we could have never imagined right now. And I'm not just talking about on your block. I'm talking about the world has needs that you could have never imagined. And you all, everybody under the sound of my voice this morning, one and the same has been equipped to fill them. Amen. So keep doing what I know many of you are doing. You collaborating, you're working together, you are empowering one another. That's the season that we are in here at the ark. We've been intentional about it and we are moving forward. Amen. The other thing is being in position will activate the power, the presence, and the anointing of God on your life and the grace to accomplish what he's called you to accomplish. Listen, you, you're not going to feel that thing while you're still on the couch. Hallelujah. Just, <laughs> just like it was not until I went down to that office and was sitting in the chair behind the desk, taking out my laptop to work. I had changed positions. I felt such an anointing come on me. I said, God, what in the world is this? What is this excitement? Because what? I had activated the power of God on my life for this season and for this next assignment by getting into position. Listen, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So you're not going to feel it while you're still on the couch. <laughs> you're not going to feel it while you're still there in the bed thinking about it. You better activate that thing, activate it by moving out now in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Woo, y'all. Y'all taking me somewhere today. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. So I, I'm about done. I want to end by sharing um, this scripture from the Message Bible. And it's Psalm 119, 
Psalm 119 from the Message Bible. Mm, mm, mm. Psalm 119 from the Message Bible, and I'm reading verses one through eight. The word of the Lord says this. You're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road he set. You, oh God, prescribe the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps might be steady, keeping to the course that you set then I never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learned the pattern of your righteous ways. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk off and leave me. And I want to read verse number one again. You are blessed highly favored, honored, loved, <laughs> adored, when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road that's revealed by God. Amen. 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 Woo. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I um um, I'm going to unmute now. One of the things that we do at the ARC and this um, um, setting is going to allow us to do, and we haven't been able to really do this in a while, is that we have a few...